I am Qiyang Lu. I am a transport engineer at ITDP. And um, today I will be sharing some of the experiences and the lessons learned from implementing electric bus systems in China. Um, I will be starting with a very brief inter overview of the current status of electric buses. And then I will be talking about so what drives the uh, such significant Adopt, uh, large uh, adaptation of the electric bus in China. And also I will be sharing some of the real world operational data and also the charging, inf charging um, data. And finally, at, at the city level, I will be sharing the, um, how Shenzhen fully electrified its bus fleet. And I will be, and in the first, in the first section, um, so the, the new energy vehicles actually is a term used only by the Chinese government to represent three types of uh, electric vehicles. And they are the, they are the battery electric vehicles and uh, the hybrid electric vehicles and also the full sale electric vehicles. And we can see that the proportion of the new energy buses in China has Thing has been increased significantly over the recent years, and and also, and specifically in 2020, the number of the proportion of new energy buses has reached over 65 percent in China nationwide. And if we break down the energy types by uh, en energy types of the and. Um, of the set of all the bus fleets in China, we, we can see that the battery electric vehicles uh, accounts for over half. Uh, so in this slide, I, 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 I said it's um, necessary to look into the detailed figures in different um, provinces and also cities because the geographical region is really large in China. And um, in 2020, the national average proportion of new energy buses is, uh, is, uh, is, has already been over 60% in all provinces. And we can also see that almost all provinces uh, has increased their proportion of new energy buses um, because of their uh, strong incentives to promoting the new energy buses. And if, uh, if we break down the figures by the cities, we can, and the national average proportion is, um, is, is also over 60%. And, uh, there are, and there are several cities have already, have already reached 100% of, the new, of the, the new energy buses in 2020, which include the Changsha city, which is located in the central of China. Um, so what drives such uh, large scale implementation of electric buses in China? And um, the most important factor is a uh, strong policy incentives. And so since 2019, the national, the national government uh, has released uh, many, many financial support policies to, um, to, in order to promote the electric, electric bus development in China. And I will be talking about this in detail later about what, uh, what financial supports are available right now. And also the electric bus industry um, also ensures that uh, the electric bus are available to use and also it drives the accelerating of the technology improvement. We found that the cities with electric bus manufacturers have the largest proportion of electric buses, uh, which is also a um, says what the reason why the electric bus industry is uh, very important as well. And also, I want to say that uh, the environmental pressure um, also plays an important role. Um, and the national, the national governments set many ambitious electrification targets to the, to the different regions and provinces uh, that have severe air pollution issues. Um, and this reason drives, uh, also drives uh, the large adoptation of electric buses at the, at the local level. 
And finally, the, the availability of the infrastructure also ensures the efficiency of the electric bus daily operations. Um, in regarding the, uh, the different financial supports by the national government, uh, the first one is the purchasing, uh, electric bus purchasing subsidies. And the subsidies, um, the subsidies are set based on different uh, electric bus technologies and also the different the different size of the bus. The longer the bus is, the more subsidies the, and the, lo the local governments will be receiving. Um, and and um, the, the amount of the subsidies uh, is, uh, is also decreasing over the recent years because of the, uh, the, the technology improvements and also the larger proportion of electric buses in China right now. In, and apart from the purchasing subsidy and the operational subsidies also plays a very important role to support the local governments and, and to accelerating the electric bus adaptation. Um, so operational subsidies it, um, uh, is released to bus operators who uh, is released to buses, electric buses that operate over uh, 30,000 kilometers per year. And also the bus operators need to apply for such the subsidy. And the figure, and also the figure is, uh, will be verified by the Ministry of Transport. And then it will be issued to the bus operators directly. Finally, is the uh, charging infrastructure subsidy. And um, I think over the, um, in the recent years, the national government is gradually moving, is gradually decreasing the subsidy for the purchasing of electric buses, but it is increasing the subsidy for the charging infrastructure and also of the daily operations. Um, and the, the charging infrastructure subsidies are, um, is set are set based on the, on the number of char charging stations that are built, and also it is based on the um, based on the different regions because and um, because in different regions the uh, they have different target of target of the electrification goals. Um, here I showed you an example in Beijing, Tianjin, Hebei, and Peoria Delta and the Yangtze River, River Delta area. And the, the, sub, the charging infrastructure subsidies are increasing, um, or are increasing year by year. And next, I want to share some of the real world of um, electric bus performance data. And the first one is the daily operational dis distance, uh, the daily operational distance per day. Um, here the figure showed you uh, that the average driving mileage of a, uh, of a battery electric bus in China is uh, 133 kilometers in 1919, um, sorry, in 2019. Uh, which increased 88% compared with last year, and which showed the improve the continuous improve technology improvement. And uh, but, however, if we compare it with a hybrid electric bus, and the figure is slightly lower. And the, for a hybrid electric bus in China, the average driving mileage per per day is 167 kilometers. And um, so we can still, we can see there is still a gap to improve. Um, also, I mean, if we break down the, uh, the operational distance um, by different regions, and um, this is uh, by cities, and uh, the average operational distance um, per day for a pure electric bus, and was slightly higher um, in the major cities in China, which was 139 kilometers in 2019. And also the largest, uh, the longest operational distance um, was achieved in Lanzhou city, which is also located in the central of China. And it has a, um, it has a, uh, 
average daily driving mileage of over 200 kilometers per day. And here I want to also want to share the energy consumption um, per 100 ki uh, per 100 kilometers drive, and um, because um, because the energy consumption could be very different um, based on the different climate, different climate, uh, and also the different uh, horizons. Um, so here we can see that the uh, in the south the south China and uh, in the north China has the largest uh, energy consumption because uh, because in these regions um, the, the extreme weather period would be longer than in other regions so which uh, de which decreased the and uh, at the battery performance of an electric bus. Um, in in this section is um, the driving infrastructure um, because this um, in China there uh, actually the most uh, uh, the uh, the mostly adopted charging system is um, plug-in system. It has the advantage of a lower initial capital cost, and it could also make the best use of charging at night, which not, not, which not only put less pressure on the grid network, but also um, help the bus operators to reduce the charging um, cost because the electricity cost in at night is slightly uh, is slightly lower than it in the, it in uh, in the daytime um, but for the plug-in system it requires more space than uh, to build the charging infrastructure and uh, so currently in china we are um, cons we are considering the pantograph charging system which uh, which could, uh, which requires less uh, which doesn't require any space, um, and it could also be uh, it could be also charging the buses very fast, but uh, the high, the capital cost uh, is very high initially. So we are, and here I want to share some of the charging data. Um, in terms of the charging beginning state of charge distribution, um, most of the, uh, so 60 to 70 percent of the state of charge is the most common, uh, it is most commonly used when charging begins, and, uh, inter and also for uh, the charging time distribution, the, we can see that most of the best operators are making best use of the uh, charging at night, and uh, the peak charging hours are, are during um, are are from 10 p.m. at night to 4 a.m. and uh, we can also see a very small charging peak here and appears at noon um, from 11 to from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. and finally I want to share with you the case of Shenzhen City. And so, uh, and how how Shenzhen fully electrified its bus fleet. Uh, so, Shenzhen's electrification journey starts uh, starts in 2009, and when Shenzhen was selected as a electric vehicle city pilot city, and at the same year, it finished the. Uh, bus operators integration, where several private bus operators are merged into three large bus companies. And uh, in following in, 20, in 2011, Shenzhen adopted 200 electric buses and also launched the, its first fully electric bus routes. Um, moving on to 2015, Shenzhen, uh, in order to solve the the capital cost problem, it explored a very new business model in China. Sorry. Um, and where Shenzhen rent a rent e buses and also and, and batteries from the manufacturers. Um, 
And this helped the Shenzhen bus group to greatly ease the pressure of the high capital cost. Um, in, in, in 2017, Shenzhen finally um, has the number of new energy buses reached over 60,000. And, and also it has the full electrification of the buses. And the figure is continuing to improve on, until today. Um, um, this is the statistical figures of how is the number of electric, uh, a number of new energy buses uh, in Shenzhen, how it evolved over the recent years. Um, uh, I want to, I also want to highlight Shenzhen's innovative business model, uh, where this model helped the Shenzhen bus group to uh, transferred its, uh, its risks to several external stakeholders, including the financial leasing company uh, who, um, uh, who provide the electric bus to the bus operators and the electric bus manufacturer who is in charge of the bus daily maintenance and also the charging service provider who provides the charging services. Um, so the, so the bus operator um, on, could, could focus only on the daily bus operations and uh, not worrying about the high capital costs and also other risks. This, this innovative business model is then adopted by many uh, other bus operators in, in Chinese cities. Um, here I listed several policies, um, policies support from the government at all levels over, over the recent years. I wouldn't go through the details here because of, because of the time constraints, but you can review this later. Um, and Shenzhen's success, success also comes from a very, a, a very efficient electric bus system. And the bus is, um, Shenzhen's journey all started with a very successful pilot uh, pilot project, and also in within the electric bus system, it has um, it considers the charging plans, the, the fleet size scheduling, and the route planning, and also considering the bus uh, the battery capacity and range, and how how to charge and how and where the charging facilities are located and also can also working with the grid electric uh, electricity grid companies to to ensure the grid capacity could be uh, could meet the needs by the electric buses and here on the right hand side i i showed you several pictures of the uh, user friendly interface um, uh, by in, in this efficient electric bus system um, we, and, in the, and how the, the data is managed also plays a very important role to, um, to ensure the daily operations are, are optimized and, and the, efficient, the maximum efficiency is achieved. Um, thank you very much for listening. Um, and at, at last, I think I, I also want to share with you two reports. And uh, one is from, one is by ITDP. It's, um, it, the first one is, uh, is the, a very systematic review of the electric bus systems. And it also provided um, um, brief in cases in the world. And in the last, uh, and the second report is by the World Bank. It is published recently. It gives you a very detailed case study of the how of Shenzhen's of the Shenzhen bus group. And uh, so I, I strongly suggest you to uh, have a look if you are interested and want to learn more. And um, thank you very much for listening.